Hello, it's Scott Manley, and uh, I am back in Kerbal Space Program. We are orbiting Minmus at uh, 10 kilometers, and we have 900 liters of fuel in this uh, three-man rocket. And uh, I'm going to try and take this home. Now, I... Uh, when I made my previous videos about the interplanetary, simulated interplanetary mission, on the final return video, uh, somebody mentioned uh, a dynamical trick which had completely slipped my mind at the time. And so I figured I'd better make a video to explain this completely. So, okay, what we are, we're in low orbit around a uh, moon, which is in high orbit around a planet. Now, if, if I want to return, first of all, I want to get into the right return geometry. And while I'm in low orbit, and as you see, it won't let me time accelerate faster than uh, 50 times normal speed. And although this looks very pretty, it will take a really long time if I wanna get all the way around to the f return position. So first thing you gotta do is break orbit. And since I am gonna be going into a uh, return trajectory, which is of higher orbit, I naively might uh, wait until I'm around the, the backside of the planet and then burn into a hyperbolic orbit so that my escape velocity from the moon adds to its orbital velocity, putting me in an even higher orbit around the planet. So let's just do that. And this uh, takes just a moment. I'm just going to burn up really relatively quickly. It doesn't take much fuel, but at the same time, I do not want to overdo this because when you're out at Minmus and you burn off, it is very easy to end up with an orbit that takes you into interplanetary space. And that means you're then cutting, uh, you're, you're then thrusting retrograde to bring your um, orbit back down. And you know, you're wasting fuel. And I don't know what the fuel budget is. I don't know if this thing can get home. We will find out. So getting up there very slowly, this of course is me being overly cautious. Now that the fuel bug is fixed, um, or at least it's fixed in my version, that it's, um, I feel uh, I'm falling back to my old ways of thrusting at very low rates. So there we are. Okay, so we are in, uh, that will take us into a Kerbin orbit. So we can time accelerate away from there and uh, watch the planet recede or watch the moon recede behind us. Say bye-bye. It'll be a long time before we see that one again. And so now we want to skip all, all the way around until we are on the in the right position to burn to interplanetary space. So there we are. Oh, yes. And uh, due to the magnificent um, <laughs> vagaries of the floating point uh, on rail system, it looks like we uh, fell back into Minmus sphere of influence despite the fact that we were clearly going faster than its escape velocity. Yeah, I, I know, strange things happen. Nevertheless, this actually, uh, we can use this to our advantage to get a little more energy. So we're going to boost once again from inside Minmus Sphere of Influence and uh, start going into interplanetary space around, the, around Kerbal. So there we are, building up speed as quick as we like. You can see that our actual speed relative to Minmus was relatively low. We're uh, 70 something meters per second. And I'm only thrusting at one third thrust again. Once again, falling victim to my uh, fear of high thrusts. I don't know what's going on there. I guess I just don't like mistakes. <laughs> so yeah, okay, we're definitely gonna escape a Minmus sphere of influence. Let's take, a, take her out of there and then we'll burn hell for leather full speed into interplanetary space because every sphere of influence transition um, only takes place on the tick after you stepped inside the sphere, which uh, means that depending upon your time acceleration, there can be huge errors whenever you jump from one sphere of influence to another. This is just simply, you know, errors in the floating point calculations uh, of, your, of your orbit. So here we go, we're uh, thrusting now into interplanetary space and you can see that I'm mousing over the apoapse or the aphelion to watch it rise. Now the target that I've been looking for, as I've mentioned in the previous missions, is 29,574. That, uh, that gives us an orbit which roughly takes us around the sun in the in the time that it takes Kerbin to go around twice. So by, you know, luck, it means that we end up uh, there when it comes around. 
So we're just reaching the limit. We're just trying to get this number right on the nose, thrusting at tiny amounts, and we've stopped moving. We've run out of fuel. So we are close. We're so close, but we ran out of fuel. Oh, these people are doomed to wander inter interplanetary space for a, a very long time, I don't doubt. Even at a even at really high time acceleration. They will eventually come back, but there's no, no chance or there's no guarantee that they will ever come close to Kerbin. So, let me show you the way that we're supposed to do this. Uh, the way that I completely forgot, and because I had loads of fuel, it didn't matter. But in this case, we see we don't have quite enough fuel. So, we're going to perform the same escape into a Kerbin orbit. But this time... I'm going to start out a different way. I'm going to go against the grain here. I'm going to put myself into a retrograde. I'm going to fire myself out the retrograde vector of Minmus so that I lose energy with respect to the moon. That means that we're actually losing energy with respect to Kerbin and putting ourselves slightly deeper into the gravity well. Uh, this may seem a little strange, but uh, trust me, there is science that is working here. You know, almost I... I there we go. Okay, so we're now into a Kerbin orbit. So we want to time accelerate out of there. Let's just uh, do that. Of course, we're inclined. Uh, one of the other things you noticed about the, the other uh, return vector was that it was slightly inclined. It didn't, um, it didn't matter too much, but I'm just going to make sure that uh, I get the inclination with respect to the planet Kerbin down. So just uh, bear with me while I time accelerate my way through a few maneuvers to get my inclination down close to uh, the, that of the plane. The plane of the, the orbits, that is. That way uh, we guarantee we're going to be spending as much time as possible in the Kerbin's orbit when we return, which is, helps a great deal when you're uh, inter going interplanetary. So there we are. Okay, so we're now orbiting around Kerbin, and I have time accelerated around. And once again, I am going to now thrust retrograde and I'm going to push my peri perigee or perikee down, way down close to the planet. And, you know, at this point, the naive people uh, are thinking that I've gone mad because, of course, I'm taking energy away from my system. I want to go back into interplanetary space and instead I'm taking the spacecraft deeper into the gravity well. As you see, we're down... Uh, 12 million kilometers, just going to bring this down to about 100 kilometers. So uh, the limits on this are effectively, the limits on the efficiency of this maneuver are essentially placed by uh, how close you can get to the center of gravity of the target body. And there's a degenerate case if you have a singularity where uh, you can actually get infinite energy. But uh, that's a degenerate case, and incidentally, if you try to do that, you would be spaghettified and torn apart by the gravitational forces. So, uh, yeah, don't do that. Also, there's no singularities in the carbon system yet, uh, other than those brought about by the Kraken. So we're down like 600, 500. We're getting really close here. It's going to take us a couple of days uh, falling down to get here. Of course, you know, the people trying to fly the other ship are... Um, they were ready to get a two-day head start, but they're a two-day head start to uh, nowhere now. There we go. That's good. That's about 100 kilometers. So now we uh, time accelerate down, bring myself... Uh, oh, yeah, time accelerated past it because I was uh, a little itchy on my trigger finger. So get myself into low Kerbin orbit. And from here, I get lined up with this vector. Now, of course, it's you got to pick... The place where you burn to bring your um, your parakeet down, lined up correctly with um, Kerbin's orbit, and yeah, from here now I'm accelerating outwards, and this is where the magic happens because we have fallen deep inside the gravity well. Our initial velocity from which we are thrusting is much higher. Our initial energy is higher, and you can see the apoapse is rising very rapidly, and. Uh, you know, our acceleration isn't any higher, our fuel efficiency isn't any higher, but what we're doing is we're dumping that fuel deep in the gravity well. Or another way to look at it is we're exploiting the Oberth effect because the work done by a rocket depends upon its speed. And since we're going faster when we're lower down, 
uh, that more than offsets the fact that we've dropped ourselves deep into the gravity well. So there we are. Well, look, no problem. We've made a, our magic number of 29 million 500, wow, 574 practically exactly. Uh, but I can't actually see a rendezvous there. Um, I can adjust that later. So let's see how much fuel we have left. 400. So we used 900 in the other case and we didn't get there. In this case, we used 400. We're almost 50% better. Now, this obviously only works if you're starting from a high orbit and you're bringing it down towards the central mass. And this has absolutely no use in version 0.16 unless you're simulating an interplanetary mission like me. But in version 0.17, you're going to have the gas giant Joule. And you can't land on that, but you can land on its moons. So when you do that, when you land on the moons and you want to make your victorious return to Kerbin, this will be by far the most efficient way to do it. You're going to drop down, you know, close to the surface, but not inside the atmosphere. And then you're going to burn and you're going to get way better fuel efficiency. You know, I get 50% better fuel efficiency here, but I suspect that for Joule, which will be further out and have a much larger gravity well, you'll get even better efficiencies. I mean, the thing to know is that it only works when you're going for an escape trajectory. It doesn't really work for um, orbits inside the sphere, of, a single sphere of influence. You have to be leaving it and trying to get as much speed as possible. And that's where the magic happens. Anyway, I'm Scott Manley. See you around. Fly safe.